Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 22. It's on the vector field. If I could hold the moon in place and just let it go, it would crash into the Earth. And the reason why is that there's a gravitational force that's pulling the moon towards the Earth, and we could represent that with a vector field. And that's a set of arrows that show where this force is pointing. And in this one, those smaller circles say that the force is getting greater the closer that moon gets to the Earth. Now we know that the moon doesn't just crash into the Earth. We know that it orbits around the Earth. And the reason why is that it has a certain amount of velocity. And that velocity allows it to just keep missing the Earth. And so what is a vector field? Well, it shows the position in two or three dimensions of a vector quantity. Now vectors, remember, are different from scalars. Vectors are going to have not only a magnitude of a force or a velocity, for example, but they're also going to show the direction in which that force is pointing. And so in Physics 1, you should really understand how to do vector fields for uh, objects related to their gravitational attraction. And then in Physics 2, it's more with electromagnetism. And so let's say we have two charges, a positive and a negative charge, you should be able to sketch out the vector field, the force of attraction between those two. Now, um, you also should be able to look at a vector field like that and figure out where are those charges and how big those charges are. To do that, a lot of the time you have to add the vectors or do vector addition. So we'll go over that. And so what is a vector? Remember, it shows not only the magnitude, but the direction. And if you've ever played Angry Birds, this is an Angry Bird that I drew, and so it's not very good. What you do is you pull back on the slingshot, and then you're going to apply a force to that Angry Bird. And so you're not only showing how, how big that force is, but you can vary the direction in which it's pointing. And so you could pull it back a different distance in a different direction, and we would give it a different vector. Now imagine you're playing multiplayer. Uh, angry birds, which I don't think you could do, but let's say both players have to pull back that angry bird and they both pull it back in different directions with a different force. How would you ever figure out which way that bird is going to go? Well, thankfully in physics we can use vector addition. What you do is take those two arrows and you line them up tail to tip, tail to tip, and then we can go from the origin of that first one that shows us uh, the vector of those combined forces. And so mapping vector fields is kind of hard to wrap your head around, and so we're going to use Angry Birds again to do that. And so in Physics 1, this would be dealing with gravity, so the attraction between two objects have, that have mass. And then in Physics 2, it would be attraction between opposite charges or opposite poles if we're looking at magnetism. And so let's take one of these Angry Birds, and we're just going to pin it there. So that's going to be the source uh, that we're going to try to map. And the other one we'll just use as a sensor. So if we take that Angry Bird, two, it's going to be attracted to the first one, and so we could represent that attraction with an arrow. We can then just move its location, and we would see that there's also going to be attraction here, but it's going to be at a different angle. Same thing here. As we move it farther away, that attraction is going to be less, and so we could map those out here as well. And now we've created a vector field. And so we have the source here in the middle, and then all these arrows represent the vector field not only the magnitude, but the direction in which that force is pointing. And you can see that all of them are pointing to the source. But let's say that they're pushing away from each other. And so now we've got like charges or like poles. So let's set up our source again, and then we're going to use our sensor. In this case, it's pushing it away. And so as we move it, same thing, we're starting to plot that vector field. The farther we go away, the less push there is. And so now we've got the source in the middle, and then we've got this vector field that we've mapped. Now you can see that all the arrows are pointing away from the source, and that'll be important when we're trying to figure out where the source is. Let's say we've got two sources now. So we've got a positive and a negative charge, for example. So how do we figure that out? Well, we have to remember that vector addition. And so we could look at the force between the two reds, and so that would be a rep repelling force. And then we would have the attractive force between the red and the green. And so what we can do is line those two vectors up, and that would be the vector sum. Let's say we go off angle. If it's up here, then we've got this repulsion here and this attraction here, so we line them up. And so we get that vector sum right there. And so we could map those vector fields. And you could do that using magnetism. So we could use a compass, for example. It's working as that second angry bird. Or you could just put iron filings on that 
that bar magnet put paper over it and we could see that no matter where we move that compass it's parallel to those fields in this case those magnetic fields and so a really good game that you could play it's a PHET simulation called the electric field hockey um, kind of plays around with this and so we're going to use a puck that has a positive charge and then we'll put a source somewhere else and so you can see when we start it there's repulsion so we could put it on the other side of the puck and we could start it and then we could score a goal so that's great now let's map the field so you can see that as I move this source we start to see the vector fields and so the brighter the arrows are in this case the bigger that force is we could now grab a opposite charge and you can see now that the arrows are pointing towards it so I could position it behind the goal and so it's slow now but as the force gets greater we get a more acceleration now this game gets harder when you start to put objects in the way and so if we just start it now, you can see that it's going to collide with that wall. So that would be a fail. We can now move it up here. So maybe we set this negative attraction up here. And now we start it. You can see that it's pulling it towards us. But now we've lost that puck forever. So now we could use multiple charges. So we add those multiple charges. You can see that we're building the field. It's a curved field. Again, it's not quite great enough for us to score a goal, but this would be something that's fun to play with. Another thing you should be able to do is, given a vector field, figure out where the source is. Figure out how many there are, what's its location, and what's its relative size. And so looking at this vector field right here, you're looking for an area where all the arrows point away from that location or towards it. And so I would say that there is one source, it's located right here, and it's hard to compare it to any other sources because there's only one. If we move to another vector field, you could Think about this for a second. How many sources do you see? Well, I see one right here, and then I see another one right over here. So again, looking for areas where all the arrows move away or they move towards that one point. So those would be the two locations. What's their size? Well, since all the arrows are of about the same uh, density, I would say that they both have equal charge. What about right here? How many sources do you see now? Well, I see one source right here, and then I see another source right here. But you can see since the arrows on this side are more dense, we would say that this is a greater charge than this charge is going to be over here. So what about this one? How many do you see? Well, I see three. So there's going to be one, two, and three. And so I would say they all have like charges. Or how many right here? So again, pause the video, try to figure out how many sources are there, and then their relative size. And so did you learn how gravitational electromagnetic sources affect a vector field? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.